and 32E. Welcome back, Hard Forkers, 1BTC and 32 Ethereum. We've got a fantastic show for you today. We're going to be talking about the opportunity to pick up some free tokens in a moment. Welcome back, Stefano. How are you, sir? All good, all good. Mr. Gonzo, how are you? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm good. Right, so those of you that do follow the show, you know that it's part review show, uh, part trading contest amongst ourselves. So we'll be having a look at how our reviewed projects have performed. First up, let's take a quick look at that, people. And then we'll get into how we're trading these. And we've got some very exciting moves from Stefano, who's been sitting on his hands for, for, for months and is about to make a drastic move Big new thing happening in the industry, so stay with us for that. We'll be there in a moment. But looking at this, guys, Argar, we're all very pleased with how that's been tracking. Uh, I'm considering getting some more of it. We had uh, the founder on, a, on an AMA last week. I'll put a link below to that. Axie is pumping. Uh, you guys just let me know that the AXS token is up over a bucket now. Any comments on that, guys? It's, I think it made what like a, a 10x or even 11x since the the launch on uh, on Binance. Yeah, the so, IEO was 10 cents, and now uh, it's a buck 10. So, good God, who's buying it? CZ spilling his bags. <laughs> Are you guys buying it? Is it a good buy at this price? Mm, probably uh, not. No idea, but I, I say that from from day one. I'm waiting for the airdrop, and then like start analyzing from there. Okay, yeah. hurry up and send us the airdrop, guys. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Nobody knows when it's going to happen, so it's going to be a bit of a wild card. Exactly. Yeah. Now, just quickly, while we're on Axie, uh, we have been giving away scholarships. My guy has massively underperformed, and I'm in a distant third. Uh, so if you would like an Axie team, put a comment below and I will be in touch with you. There's also a link to the Discord. Jump in there as well and have a chat directly with me. But there is an actually team on offer. I need someone that can actually play. Get involved. So moving through these quickly, guys. Uh, Bonk, not a lot happening there for a while. DMG continues to disappoint. Ethereum, we had the founder on last week. That's going great guns for us, up 345% since we've held it for the last few months. Hex still up significantly, but a bit of a pullback lately. Pamp. Uh, that's actually a failed project. Um, Pirate token up significantly as well, but obviously a bit down on the week there. And trade continues to disappoint a project that I really rated. I think we all did and done much. We'll uh, look to get the uh, one of the guys from that project back on to explain why. And obviously we've got the the NFT from Vesa. Um, don't be confused by the zeros there. Uh, we're going to figure out how to put a value on uh, NFTs, which uh, we do cover a lot on the show and we'll be looking at again very shortly. But Stefano, I think you're kind of the uh, the man of the moment for, for the show. Uh, so two things. Number one, can you tell the audience what we're doing on Friday and how they can uh, potentially pick up some, some free tokens? Then we're going to look sure. at this farming. Let me try to not be boring about this. So Friday uh, at 9 p.m. UTC time. So that is going to be like uh, 10 p.m. if you're like in Italy, for example, 4 a.m. if you're in Bangkok uh, of Saturday in that specific case, 5 a.m. if you're in Singapore, you know, kind of like open uh, a time zone thing. And it's going to be 9 p.m. UTC to time. Make, to make it really easy on everyone watching, there is a link below to the thumbnail. You can set a reminder. We're going we're gonna to be live during this. So this is the easiest thing to do. True. Uh, it's going to be on Decentraland. We are? So 4 a.m. on Bangkok? Oh, fuck me. Well, I will be at 5 a.m. on Singapore <laughs> time. But... Oh, shit. No, they can't, can't guarantee I'm going to be active, but I'm going to be there. That's for sure. All right, um, well, location well. is on Decentraland. So if you want to participate, uh, be sure to create a, an avatar or character over there. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. There is no cost registration involved. It's an event that is open for everybody. The event is the Mega Cube. So what does this mean? There is going to be an enormous cube made of uh, 50 blocks per layer so we're talking about like 125,000 little blocks 
where the goal is to like uh, mine and so destroy every single one of those block. The first person to reach the core of the block is going to receive a, a, a big price and that is going to be available only for one person. While all the others, while you're mining the blocks and, and kind of like destroying them, uh, you have the chance maybe sometimes to receive like some prices on little prices on the little blocks as well. So you can farm, for example, NFTs. Um, in uh, there are artists as uh, as some of the sponsors. You can farm like wearables and uh, and characters. So for your avatar, as some of the partners are the Sandbox or uh, Decentraland per se, you can actually farm Avagachi is one of the partner uh, the sponsors as well. You can farm ERC twenty tokens like Matic coins, for example. So uh, kind of like a, an opportunity to load up on a lot of different items and things. Um, now, the only things that you need and get ready for that because it all comes down to like what is going to be the Ethereum gas price on that, but you would have to pay gas in order to like cash out those items that you're finding on, into your wallet. You're not obliged to doing that. So if you don't want to pay the gas, you're just not going to redeem the item. So if it's something is very cheap and you don't want to pay $20 for a gas price for that, don't worry about that. You're not obliged to doing that. If you find something good and you want to take it that out, uh, then obviously prefer a little bit of gas in, in your wallet. The event is going to last for as long as it takes. Yeah, go for it, Jordan. So you can't hold the item and wait for the gas to go down? So on the central end, the way that it works is that you can redeem them later. So you can okay. combine and stack them all together and then like do a very, very expensive transaction, just a single one to redeem all the items in one shot. However, if I'm not mistaken, you have a time frame that is like either 12 or 24 hours to redeem that. So you can do the event, stack them all together, but then let's assume that you have a windows of 12 hours at that point to redeem that. Hmm. Is that going to be enough to find a cheap spot for gas? Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. So listen, if, if, if you're a little bit confused, we will be live uh, during that event. We'll be screen sharing it, uh, showing you what we're doing and, and obviously answering your questions and, and helping you along. So as I say, there's a link below, set a reminder uh, if you want to join us for that. And Stefano, I think it's a, a good segue into what you're doing. I know you've... Uh, come out of your BTC position on Prime XBT, which you never actually traded once. Thanks once again to Prime for sponsoring us last year. Hopefully they uh, come back on board. I'm not currently in any trades there, but we'll be next week and I'll show you what that is. But before I get ahead of myself, Stefano, what have you done? What the hell is gas farming? Talk us through it. So I cash out my BTC position and my Ethereum position, and I put them into two different tokens that you can see by just checking my Ethereum uh, wallet on Etherscan. So here's the thing. Gas price is super expensive. We all know that. It costs like $5, $20, $30 to do a simple transaction. New projects are popping up now that allow you to get a cash back on the gas that you're spending and therefore farm and receive the cash back as their governance token in return. So we're basically like thinking about like, you're spending $20 for a transaction, whatever transaction it is, but it doesn't matter. We're really on just focusing on the gas. This $20 that you're spending because you hold token X, for example, that token X is paying you back the $20 that you just spent on the gas into their own token. So you do your normal transaction on DeFi, Uniswap, on Balancer, on Curve, or whatever, on OpenSea and buying an NFT, whatever things you're doing. And this new project pays you back the $20 that you've spent on your gas. Now, the system is obviously like a 90%, it's not 100%. So on those $20, you're actually getting back $18. So you're losing $2. But because there are more projects, that are doing this. And so, for example, there are two projects doing that. If you I'm all- just, I'm actually just trying to bring it up here and screen share it while you're talking. I'm actually having trouble getting sure. to it. Sure. Uh, let me see. Post time. Do, 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 do. Sorry, here we go. Oh, nice. So, I believe- You're gonna get back after a short break. Here we go. This is one of them, right? Yeah, that's one of the two, uh, Eno. 
And um, so in all gives you like 2.5% max of like the amount of, uh, of token that you hold. So if you hold, for example, a thousand dollars worth of that token, you can redeem up to $25 in cash back every single day from, uh, from them. Now, keep in mind that like once you redeem that amount of money, 10% goes back in the pool. So of those 25%, you, can, you actually can redeem only 90% of them. So that is cool. But if you pair that with a second um, cash back on, on gas token, then you got like 90% plus 90%. So you can actually gain a profit when you're like doing a transaction. So you're doing three things at the same time, basically. You're doing your transaction, your normal one, buy an NFT on, on OpenSea. And then the gas that you're spending, you get 90% on token A and 90% on token B, making a 180% uh, profit on that. Now, I do believe that this is actually going to be a very interested R and D uh, moment because we have seen in the past like six, eight months uh, the craziness of DeFi, the craziness of EO farming, and the craziness of NFTs. A lot of people say it's just getting started and so on, but just like let's look at the data, what happened in the, in the past and so on. So. Why is gas farming important, at least for me? Because it opens up on what can potentially happen to the story of the gas price on Ethereum. If a lot of people are going to start abusing the system, this is going to be absolutely bad for Ethereum. It's going to be terrible because I can abuse the system because I'm making money so I can do pointless transactions. Now, please, please, please do not do pointless transactions. If you're doing gas farming, be sure to just have like still doing what you would do normally every single day. Don't abuse the system because if someone abuses the system, it's going to collapse for everybody. And it's going to be very, very bad for the normal Joe that is trying to like just entering and exiting a trade on Uniswap or something like that. And things are already bad. So do not abuse that. But this to me is a very interesting social experiment because if people start abusing that and they become very, very greedy, then the Ethereum gas price situation is going to be even worse. And so if that is the case, more and more projects are going to start migrating on side chains or layer two solutions. As we're seeing like companies moving to Loopring, to Matic, to XDAI, um, to Polkadot. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And so if that is going to be the case, people are going to be greedy, then my interest is going to be much higher into layer twos and side chains like Polkadot because a lot of projects are going to migrate there. And with projects migrating there, communities are going to migrate there as well. If, however, people do not abuse the system. And so I, I know the Jordan is saying never going to happen, but, but that's the thing. It's a, it's a social experiment. That's why it's so cool. Case one, they abuse the system. Focus on layer two and, and polka dot, at least for me, on how I'm going to rebalance my portfolio. Point two, people do not abuse that. That potentially is actually almost going to solve the problem on the gas price. Because it means that nobody's abusing that, but actually the real cost of paying for the Ethereum gas price is going to be much lower because you're receiving cash back from there, which means that the utility and the usability could in theory be extremely good. And so if you were waiting for a simple transaction of like 50 or $60 because it was too expensive, now in theory, you could do that. And that could potentially bring more utility inside Ethereum while we're waiting for 2.0 and so on, which actually at that point will convert on a more bullish, a more bullish approach on Ethereum per se as, as a network. So those are the two cases, why I'm doing this, why I'm so interested in this, um, and I want to see how it plays out. Okay, so the two tokens uh, that you have moved some capital into, just remind us again, they are... So me personally, Eno. I bought uh, Eno, which is E-N-O-L, and another one that it's called U-N-D-G. However, however, there are already other two projects that have popped up, um, I did not vote in 204. That's exactly what I meant with that. You want to be super, super greedy. You could hold all four. And instead of making 180% return, you can make a 360% return. 
on every single trade and transaction that you're doing. So, you know, you have four right now. If it goes into craziness of yield farming, of copycatting on Unicat, uh, on Unicat, yes, uh, <laughs> on Uniswap, on DeFi, and so on, as we've seen like in the past in summer playing out, we might actually start seeing that instead of like four projects in a matter of a couple of months, we might have like 40. Okay. If, in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks as well. Yeah, that's true. If the story goes into that direction, this is going to be so bad for the industry that it actually plays out to be a perfect case to buy into Polkadot, to buy yeah, into XDAI, to buy into like Matic. It. Yeah. Interesting. So Mr. Stefano, Gonza, any comments? How close have you looked at, you know, and UGNS? So, like, uh, do they have, is it like endless minting? Is there any back doors? Is no, I uh, no. So, uh, uh, I mean, like they're, they're basically like, they're all fixed in supply. They're all very, very fixed. Um, the way that it works is that like you do get like uh, the the majority of the tokens are obviously like held in uh, in the smart contract, and that's like where the cashback is taken. And then like they refill the vault with two models. The first one is every single time that you're doing a transfer on Uniswap, for example, cashing out and things like that, they put a fee of four percent on that token. So that 4% of a fee is sent back into the vault that then is distributing to the user. And the second thing is that when you are claiming the cash back, 10% is taken as a fee. So in total, in their time transfer, you're losing 14% that is sent back into the vault. Mm -hmm. But 4% is also in trading and so on. Now, here's the thing. Mathematically speaking, the system survive if people do not abuse the model. <laughs> so, and, and that's the thing. That's why it's super high risk because there is the chance that a model like this collapse down, die completely, and it's never going to go into formal mode neither. Nobody's ever going to like start replicating that. There is not going to be like copycats popping up and so on. But if you have like the max amount of like 2.5% that you can redeem every single day, if people abuse the system till a point of one or 1.5%, then the model is self-sustainable. However, you do get another 1% margin that you can play around. And so if people goes into that space, then the models start collapsing down. And when the vault gets to zero, then it's game over. It's a social yeah. experiment. That's why it's so cool. But okay. it's going to be a social experiment ruined by bots. It's going to get botted to fuck, man. Potentially, it's yes. Totally but a bot, but a bot is run by actually a person at the end of the day. There is a person that is going to about, click that bottom. You're talking about greed that can be automated. Yes. It's going to fucking happen. It's going to get... No, I, I agree with you. Potentially, yes. But that, that's exactly my point. If we don't show that there is actually a better use case for this situation without waiting for 2.0 and Ethereum to come in place. If yeah. we all understand that there is a way for all of us to not be greedy and to like, you know, going for that extra hundreds, 200, couple of thousands of dollars a month, we could have an environment that is much better for everybody. Why am I doing this? Why am I taking the risk of literally taking out all the ETH and the BTC for this? Because I've said that all the time, that to me, Ethereum has the base and the potential to prove universal basic income to society and to the yeah, world. No and so I, I have, for, from my point of view, from my belief, I must follow things like that. Yeah. Because I need to believe the best in humans in, in the crypto community but i know the 99 percent you are 100 percent right i'm gonna to find a question what what percentage of your competition portfolio are you putting into this particular sector and how are you going to assess whether it is being abused and whether, whether you, you you're, you're going to lose your money uh how are you thinking about this next next few so weeks? right now i have 33 percent of my entire uh capital there of the competition portfolio. I want to bring it up to like at least 50 or 60%. Uh, I really want to take like a, a proper position on this, on like true, see how it pays out. How do I understand if this model works or not? Well, if it doesn't work, I am going to lose everything. <laughs> I'm 100% going to lose. They change people. <laughs> No, that's that's a thing. Like it's when, when when would you know it's working, and and, and how would you know it's working? What, I what, think a couple of months from now, 
Number I think two, one or two months from now, that's that's going to be like the, the moment of seeing how it plays out. So is it a big payday scenario and or a lose everything scenario or is there an in-between here? <laughs> no, no, no. It's There is no such a thing like a payday. Is uh, option The bad side is I lose everything or 90%, 95%, 99%, something like that. It, it doesn't, the model doesn't self-sustain itself. The system is completely wrong. You lose everything. That's it. Game over. You're taking a huge gamble. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay. However, if it plays out to be true and be correct, this open up to one, a possible cashback, which is fine, which is not a bad thing. And number two, allowed in me to start playing on other things that right now are completely impossible. I'll give you an example. There is a game that I actually would like to test out, and it's one uh, Formula One Delta Time, which is like the one with the Rev uh, token, and you play a game, you own your F1, your Formula One cars, and you compete with other people on a circuit, and if you have the best time, you win and so on. Now, in order to buy into the NFTs, you need to buy the keys. So you buy the keys, which is like a crates, and then you open the crates. A key costs $20, okay? To open a key, you're paying $50 in gas price. Yeah. Am I trying to play this game? No, I'm not. Do I want to use gas farming to abuse the system and make more money? No, I don't. I just want to use gas farming to be able to open a crate and play a game. And that's my entire point on that. It opens up opportunities that otherwise in this situation of Ethereum with the current gas price, you're not allowed to use. Yeah. Might have to use that for my axie breeding. Bingo. That's another thing. Game on. Okay. Well, it's possibly a fairly complex topic for a lot of the audience uh, watching this, but we, we will be taking a close look at it. Um, so there's some links below to those companies. Actually, if there's anyone in any of those communities in that space, uh, get in touch. We'd love to have you on for a chat. Mr. Gonzo, I see you shaking your head on this one. Uh, do you want to, would you be taking a position in, uh, in, in this sector? Yeah, I mean, it just, what Stefano's described, I'm into that. I'm totally into that. I didn't know anything about it yet. Uh, but that sounds like, you know, this is, this is bound to happen. Somebody's got to come up with a solution for all the gas problems, you know, like everybody's experiencing the exact same thing. So it doesn't surprise me that all of a sudden the void's been filled and then there's a copycat and another copycat and another copycat. Stefano, like me, you know, is a bit of a, uh, you know, eternal optimist, right? He's hoping for the best, right? And I've, before I joined crypto, I was much more like that. Since I've been in crypto, I'd have a lot less faith in humans, especially humans in crypto, because they're here for one reason. Like the people that are here now are for one reason, and it's fucking greed, right? I mean, there's the outliers like us for the tech and stuff, but you know, the good majority of the people are here to make money, right? So, and the fact that this, like you just watch any of the Uniswap launches, so many of them are good projects and they just get bought into hell because it's like some guy who's a good programmer and he sees a loophole in the system, like it can make one or 2% scalps and they play with these massive stacks, right? Like Stefano, they're going to make so much money if they can do that. They have a bot that rolls with like 10 ETH at a time, right? They make 1% on that trade and they're going to get uh, money back with these other tokens. Man, I can see it getting exploited quite quick. Yeah. So it seems like there's a small window where it might be a heyday, but I could see it closing pretty quick. You know, it's I mean they I, they kind of exploit where everything is, you know, these couple massive transactions and it just drains the treasury right away. It's like it's true, but they, they can like implement some solutions. Take for example, like this concept is being used now by balancer. And Balancer is not a small player. You got Uniswap, you got like uh, Curve, you got Balancer. Mm -hmm. So Balancer, what Balancer is doing now is allowing you for a period of four weeks, the community has vote. Now, this is one of the use case, a very strong use case for government tokens. Why is that important? Because a person has wrote like this vote and the community has vote and it passed. So for the next four weeks, when you are using the Balancer pool, you're receiving 
almost like in a super sim oversimplified way, go and read like the entire text and so on. But you're getting between like a 40 to 50% cash back on the gas that you're paying by using the balancer exchange, which is like basically Uniswap. Mm -hmm. And that 40, 50% cash back that you're receiving on the gas is actually paying in, uh, in BAL, in uh, the balancer token, governance token. Now, what they have done was to implement uh, some situations where you're obliged of like going on the uh, on the exchange UI in order to like trigger the the operation. So like with a front end trigger there. And so if you're using a bot, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Now, in the specific case of like Enol or uh, the other one. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately, because like it just calculates in a very rudimental way the transactions that are being done on your wallet and, and it stops over there. However, nothing is stopping them to actually check if there is something happening over there. Like they could put like some, some security layer, some triggers point that like would approve or deny the specific transaction from receiving that cash back. They're not there yet. We're talking, here's another thing. Enol is being around for like less than two months. And the other one is being around for less than one week. <laughs> like, yeah. and even with that, less than a week, in a matter of like three or four days, we already got other two projects popping up. So there is a lot of mess that is going to happen. There is a lot of craziness that is going to happen. That's for sure. But there is also the chance that if these projects are not there for, and, and that's unfortunately where I completely agree with you, but if we want to put hope in these teams that are actually there not to be money grab projects and be like, here's my pre-sale, my sales offering. Stefano, can, money. I, can, I, can I just jump in here? Uh, yeah. Look, you know, if there's a ton of money coming into Ethereum. This article has just, just come out uh, in the last couple of hours. Uh, it's talking that the the realized capitalization uh, has increased by fifty percent in in January mm -hmm. uh, on Ethereum. So there's there's money plowing in. What can you just in really basic terms explain to people that are you know I know a lot of people and I've helped them buy Ethereum this week. What really is the is this big issue here? Gas fees. Most of them still don't really even understand this. Um, the more people that are buying into Ethereum, this is doing what to, to, to the network and this, this gas farming in super simple terms solves it how? It's congesting the, the network. So imagine that like you are, uh, you're going to a cafe or a restaurant and every time that you're going to that cafe, um, you're paying a fee to, to go in. Uh, so you're paying maybe like a dollar. And so Jordan goes in the cafe, pays a dollar. You go into the cafe, pays a dollar. I go into the cafe, pay a dollar. But there are only four chairs into that cafe. Now we took the first three. And then there is a queue of a hundred people that wants to get the fourth and last chair. And so the owner of the cafe says, okay, whoever gives me the, more, the most amount of money gets the final chair. And so there is a guy that says, I'm offering $2. And there is another one that says, I'm offering three. And then it arrives uh, Elon Musk. And he's like, I'm offering 5 million for that share. So at this point, Elon Musk paid 5 million because the owner of the cafe says like, yeah, you come in, that's for sure. And anybody else doesn't have enough money to play in the game. So you're left out. From that moment on going, the owner of the cafe, the next day, the next week, the, the next month, whatever it is, the owner of the cafe says like, okay, from now on, because I had a hundred people lined up, instead of being having a fee entry of $1, it's going to be $2. And so Jordan arrives and he's like, okay, $2, it's fine. You arrive and he's like, $2, okay, it's fine. I arrive, $2, it's fine. And then again, a hundred people, they're like, $2. Okay, I offer three, I offer five, I offer 10. And then Elon Musk comes back and he's like, I really love the coffee here. Another 5 million. 
Now imagine that every single time becomes more complete. The more people there are, the longer the queue comes. And so the more chances you have that there are other people as rich as Elon Musk. Now, not as rich as Elon Musk, but in a position of putting down millions of dollars to get that chair in the cafe. This is what is happening with the gas fees. So the person who's just buying Ethereum, they've heard of it. Uh, they're wrapping their head around this crypto space. Everyone's telling them buy Ethereum. Buying and holding it, moving it uh, into cold storage, et cetera. Do these new purchases of Ethereum have a major impact on the gas fees or is it the growth of the network and people trying to use it? No, it's the, the growth of the network. The people that buy, the buy Ethereum just use like one transfer and that's it, which is well, most would... likely combined into, into a single block with, with other transactions of people that wants to buy. Yeah. Majority of the people that buys on those amounts, they buy for buy and hold. They're not really moving that around. We're but, starting, sorry, what? Well, I'll counter that because you can watch when the market starts pumping, uh, when Ethereum starts pumping, Bitcoin, anything, like we get spikes in the market, the gas prices pump. Yeah. Right, because everybody's trying to make transactions at the same time. Whether they're buying and holding or they're buying more or they're unstaking or they're staking, right? That, so it's all, the, uh, it's all the trading going on and other alts, uh, Gonzo, yeah. that... That is really yeah. can just right. and it also same thing when it dumps right when you get those major dumps that we like 10 15 percent in the majors on one day man the the network just becomes completely in congested so you're, that, you're ending up with true, a forced that, hold because you can't afford to unstake or you can't afford to sell because it's dumping so fast and the network is locked up but that's the thing there there are different things on like if i'm buying if i'm an edge fund and i'm buying like you know a billion dollars worth of eth just like yeah. to keep it that yes. in a store yeah. i'm not congesting the network i'm doing my transfer that's it and I, it's and it's supporting the article that shown so uh, show that i bring in money into the system like i lock those values in because i'm taking my eth and i'm just storing that and that's it i could with 100 dollars for example potentially congest the network by my own because i could start doing like a thousand transactions all verified and so on 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 ethereum and my hundred dollars could congest the network at that point here is the same thing we do have an insane amount of users on ethereum but we also have like an insane amount of people that are buying for the store of value thing why are they doing that because ethereum is moving to 2.0 because there is EIP 1159 that is going to be implemented at some point because the the long roadmap for Ethereum it's it's amazing like I, I it's not financial advice or anything like that everybody needs to do their own research but to be honest like find me one roadmap that is better than the one of, of Ethereum right now and like okay good luck to be honest because like it's incredible Bitcoin. What's the roadmap of Bitcoin? Like <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Got a problem with that? Institutional transfer value, countries, uh, reserve currencies. What a roadmap. Yeah, but it's not. Well, I think the roadmap's roadmap. pretty clear for, for Bitcoin, Stefano. I mean, I know you have, it's a, it's a, I guess it's your second uh, largest holding after Ethereum. And I, I'm sure you agree with me. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to see f uh, more printing this year. I, I don't think the equity market's going to collapse, but the real cost of money is 15%. Institutions are seeing this. They're moving their treasuries across. You've got a guy like Michael Sater inviting hundreds of people uh, along to a conference where he's basically going to give them all his playbook about how uh, his particular company acquired Bitcoin, how they custody it, uh, the, the accountancy the compliance, the lot. So I, I fully expect, I mean, I'm talking to some family officers myself. They all want a piece of this action. They're also all very much looking at Ethereum as well uh, as the next next cab off the rank, so to speak. But to what degree do you think uh, alt season is, is in full swing here, guys? Uh, we've got the likes of Raul Paul, who's, who's now bought a basket of 10 alts as well. And He's moved from Bitcoin to Ethereum to uh, to altcoins now as a as a champion on on that front. What are your thoughts? What's uh, what's happening in Altland in general, Mister Gonzo? Unmute, uh, man. It's pumping for sure. In January, I've had my most 
most profitable month like since August, July. Uh, but I'm just I'm not not trading low caps, trading everything but Bitcoin pretty much in the top hundred, you know. So DOT, Ethereum, Link, uh, Neo, pretty much that's it. Like top ten coins. Well, Neo's not top ten, but okay. and getting those spikes and a little bit of cross margin on there. Uh, everything's just so bullish right now. I mean, okay. find your fundamentally strong coins. I'm not worried about them dumping like crazy. You know, there's so much interest, right? Everybody's waiting for it. Uh, you're seeing that money flow going from Bitcoin. It pumps like within a day, uh, your lower caps start pumping, right? Within a couple of days, smaller caps start pumping. Uh, Ethereum pumps, same thing. And then everything else flows into the lower caps. It's totally following that cycle right now. Yeah. It's not like this macro scale, you know, like everybody has this like, oh, you know, Bitcoin hits a peak and then like two, three, four months later, everything flows into alts. It happens fast, you know, like mm. you get these whales, they're made a bunch of profit and it's a group of them and they'll go and find the next thing and it happens quick. Yeah. You're getting like, look at watch Binance. Every day there's three, four coins that are over 50%. Yeah. Right? So it's happening for sure. Very true. Uh, obviously, you know, a good indicator there. I covered this with Lisa on Monday is to look at that BTC dominance, which has been in a real downtrend. Uh, it was sitting at 60% on, on Mondays. I think it's back up to 62. Uh, but, you know, that's significantly down. So, yeah, the alts are, are certainly having a bit of a run at the moment. Uh, join us on that, that trading show on Monday. We do sort of cover that that territory. Look, guys, um, thanks for your time today. We'll we'll obviously be looking at this gas farming very closely. Thank you for putting it on everyone's radar, Stefano. Uh, so Friday, if you want to join us, there's that 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 link below. We'll probably cover some sort of general questions for you as well. But obviously, that show is very much to. Uh, We're not going to cover anything. Focus. We're going to be mining blocks. <laughs> Right. No Don't time to talk, just mine blocks. Sean, is no. that live block show, is that the same one in Fiji? No, that's a different show, right? No, 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 no. So, oh. uh, yeah, I don't know if you can join us at 4 a.m. Jordan, how long, how long is that going to be going for, uh, Stefano? Do you know? Uh, well, that's the interesting part. So, in theory, if we're doing the math... Um, going to have to do math to get there. Yeah, so you got like 125,000 blocks uh, of pretty much like, imagine that like you take around like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Someone say that it's around like 13 seconds to actually mine a block. It depends on how many people there is going to be around. I think that if it's a popular event or something like Decentraland, we're expecting around like one to 200 people uh, pretty much to show yeah. up. Which means that we're looking at like anything between like two to three hours to mine like one block. However, here's the thing that is unclear at the moment. They might double down on the 50 and create 50 mega cubes. So at that point, it might be that it's going to keep going on for a week. <laughs> we will be live for a week. Where is it being hosted? Just, just for you. Uh, the central end. We don't know the, the coordinates right now, but it's going to be all 100% oh, in, no, uh, in the central end. Okay. So once again, you can find that also on, uh, well, on the central end on the events. Uh, and, and it's there. It's the, the mega cube event. Okay. Link below for that, people. And obviously, if you want to join us uh, on a live stream as we, uh, we go and get some free tokens, you're, uh, you're very welcome. We hope to see you there hey, on Sean. Friday. Sean, you got a Decentraland avatar yet? Uh, that's what I shall be doing this evening. I got one, one on, the, Valley. on the competition wallet. Yeah, but that's not useful in the DCO. No, well, I, will, I will be, it'll be it'll with be my avatar Friday. on Friday. Friday at 3.30 a.m.? No, I'm How do I open me. my MetaMask and make an avatar for DC? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Sean, oh, I'm telling you up front. Oh, yeah, this show's call... over. It looks like the crowd are turning on me. <laughs> if if you're trying to call either me or Jordan, no, 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 you two have taught me a lot in the last six months, so we'll give you that. And if you want an Axie Infinity team, 
Link below to the Discord. Comment below. I've got one for you. My last guy, I, I think he may have been hit by a bus. I'm not sure. My guy's over 6,000 SLP. Yeah, okay. Don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't help have... some people. I don't know what's going on with this dude. Anyway, links below for the event Friday. We'll also put a link to uh, Decentral Land so you can check that out. If you want an Axie team, get in touch. Uh, we'll be showing you how our three teams have performed next week. And as you'll see, yeah, You're bronze position lose. for me. <laughs> 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 okay, guys, look, uh, we hope we added some value to you viewers. Please like and comment below, and we'll uh, we'll see you all here on Friday, if not Friday, next week. See you later, Thank people. Guys. Cheers, guys. Peace out.